This looks really cool. Oh, are you able to see the whole place? No, it's just like it's, just like, it's all like darkened. But yeah. It reminds me of Rifton. Reminds you of what? Rifton <laughs> from Skyrim. <laughs> Not sure. Oh, Rifton. <laughs> yeah, where the Thieves Guild is. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember now. Smell like what thought? Dude, the <laughs> the place where they put the the thieves guild's door is like not subtle at all, dude. <laughs> it's just <laughs> like you go under the bridge, there it is. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um. So uh, the guard that's assigned to you guys, let's just say he's just with you still. All right. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I, I, I'm careful of my surroundings looking around. You see some of these guys just kind of eyeing you out, right? Like they're, they, they start looking at your shoulders then they look at your, your waist area to see if there's anything there, but uh, they don't do anything. You see from time to time you get some scowls, some, some, uh, like some some side eye here and there, and you can even see somebody who's kind of obviously gossiping about you, either something about your appearance or your smell or something of the sort. Um, how do they look? A lot of them have very dirty, dirty skin, uh, not very clean at all. Some of them have normal skin, but they have scars of all kinds. Uh, for certain, some of these people, or a lot of these people, have at least fought once in their life, for their life. Um, and uh, a lot of them look mean, a lot of them look scared, and a lot of them are also just indifferent. And this, um, the water here is like polluted? The water is most definitely polluted. You'd, you'd see, um, from time to time, you'd see a boot. You'd see some, uh, you'd see some poop floating around, literally. Nice. You, and if you look and you squint your eyes, you'd see that some of the trash that's down there look like condoms. Nice. At least they're using protection, baby. True. Better than just just flowing down, I guess. <laughs> just creating some more slum dogs. Hmm. <laughs> What's going on over here? Uh, can you ping what you're talking about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, um, you, you start to notice that not everyone is just like a random looking thug looking person. But when you get closer towards this side of the, of the, the slums, you see a lot of these guys kind of just sitting on the roof uh, with their with their feet just hanging from the edge. And a lot of them are wearing a lot of the same colors, not necessarily the same clothing. They're all wearing different types of clothing and tethers and whatnot. But they generally stick to the same color, almost uh, as a way to unif to kind of uh, signify that they're, they are the, the same units. 
they eye you out and they it's very clear they're studying you well, what color is it um, it is the color green green <laughs> Their clothes are green, but they are not green skin. Far away, though, can you tell? That's true. <laughs> what? They're wearing a long sleeve shirt. Hmm. Well, I don't know well, if, like, about going here and then getting on one of these guys standing up here. What was that? I'm just, I'm just parlaying the area, or, like, examining the area. Yeah, what were you looking for, like, uh, specifically? Like, at those guys that are on the roof? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so the the two guys over there are kind of just like one guy elbows the other one, and they're both just staring at you. And then, well, what you, you can see kind of like one person like laughing of some sorts. They're they're definitely making fun of you in some way or another. You don't necessarily hear it because they're a few stories high. And then the guy at the the far end of the roof, the one that's by himself. He, um, you can see him just kind of uh, like dozed off. It's almost like he is under some kind of influence. <clears throat> see. All right. So. Well. Okay. Probably. And let me um let's see if I could put some sound here. I I don't think there's actually sound here, is there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me let me add some ambience. I don't know if it's actually even playing. In fact, I hear birds. Oh yeah, that that should be it. <clears throat> All right. Um, do these guys like look different than the other than these guys? They're wearing the same colors, but they're bigger, bulkier, and they're tougher looking. And they have uh, they have teeth that strike out to you as very nasty and very poorly maintained. But um, one of them looks at you and he says, "Well, well, they're not from around here, are you?" And you see the the other guy who looks. Very identical to him. They're almost like twins. They probably are twins as far as you're concerned. He says, Yeah. I don't think he's from around town. What do you think, brother? Do you think he's the one that we should be going to? Yeah, yeah. I think this could be the one. He, he kind of fits the vibe, if you know what I'm talking about. Say what's what do you mean? 
Oh, let's just say you're new, but you're not necessarily one of those snobs who's living up there. As uh, he clearly points up to where the dam would be, as the dam is kind of acting like this this ginormous wall that separates the slums from the rest of the city. And he says, Yeah. Maybe you can share a little sentiment with us. I mean, look at you. You're as dirty as us. Maybe you can hear us out on something. Hmm? Is this true? Say, uh, what is it that you need? So here's, here's the thing. You know what it's like to live in good old Laguna. The capital where everything is mostly happy. Sure. So recently things have not been so well. Yes, I was sarcastic. <laughs> that wasn't clear. Now, you know, in the last week, you know what I ate? <laughs> What's that? I ate a rotten apple, another man's finger, and uh, some really, really Terrible wolf meat. Just off and run on the road. You know what it takes to get by here? Mm. Oh, Taking funny. anything you can get for some fucking chance to even live a life. Half of the people here, they think, oh, we just got to live an honest living and try to make it back up there. But let me tell you, you don't just walk up there. They'll push you right back down that fucking dam. And your chance at life is over. The system's rigged. Some people, they even go outside. They think we can make a living somewhere out there. But you know what? A lot of these people go missing. We never see them again. Maybe that means they succeeded, you know? But we never hear from them. And they're our boys, you know? We don't just forget about each other. We... We tell each other if something, something's good out there to look for. But I never hear that from them. Something's happening out there for sure. No one wants to fucking find out anymore. So we're here just looking out for each other. Me and my boys. That makes sense. Say, how long have you lived in Laguna? Uh, it's probably been a couple of decades. And when did that... We don't live oh. that long over here. The oldest guy I know, he's probably in his 60s, and he might as well be dead. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he died any time this week now. He's sick. There's no way you're going to get treated as a sick person here. Things uh, don't work that way around here. <clears throat> so where is this guy? Huh? This, oh, this, you'll, this... you'll find him under that shack right there, and uh, he just he just points over to uh, he just points over to this roof right here, and you can see that there is an old guy that's been poorly taken care of. Uh, 
He's very malnourished. You see his, you see his uh, bones sticking out from under his skin. He looks like he's miserable. He can't even breathe. You, you would have thought he was dead first looking at him. I, uh, I motion at Thrissel. So, uh, perhaps you can take a look. I shrug as I and I and I approach. All right, from uh, five, ten, five, four, fifteen feet away, what do I see? Put a mask on. Yeah, I gotta put the put the. Gloves. Let me uh, throw some uh, uh, what's it called? Spray some uh, fix rub inside my uh, my uh. My, my bird mask, and I'm going to put it on. I play Dr. Mask. <laughs> okay. You actually have one? No. <laughs> okay. Of course not. What? Do you want me to make you one? No. Is that all right? I take, I, I, I take a look at this guy. Try to determine the, I guess... The cause of his ailment. Well, how yeah, convenient. We we'll use that token right there as a representation. But uh, their skin is very spotty. They have all kinds of rashes. And again, uh, they, they look like they're just skin and bones. There's nothing in between at this point. And uh, yeah. Rash, blotchy. Yeah. Blotchy, that's a, that's a circulatory compromise, and rash is usually infectious. This, this guy, this guy got some kind of microbe in him. Maybe. Okay, what's how does is he feel hot to touch? Warm. Is uh is what? Does he feel warm to touch? Is a fever? He's feeling very cold, actually. Okay, so he got a point where where his his. His hypothalamus is sort of giving up, all right. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, let me get, let me get some, um, let's draw some blood, do some lab work right here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, I was going to do a medicine check. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, let's do a medicine check. What are, what, what are you trying to discern about? Oh my god. What right. the oh. hell? Huh. Yo. I guess just like his his ailment. Is it something f is mostly I'm thinking of is it is it is it well it clearly is infectious because he's infected, but is it contagious? Right. Is this a one off thing or is it does it spread? It it doesn't seem like it's there to spread. And you feel very confident in this answer, at least, that you mm. in the conclusion. Because you look around, you see no signs of it spreading from any of these guys. You don't see anybody else along these shacks um, that seems to have it. You don't even see them try and put up any kind of barrier between them. Um, people just kind of generally keep their distance. So they're not really that worried about it spreading. So it is not contagious, just based off of principle of how these guys are acting. Now, scientifically, when you look at it, uh, the things that you know, at least in the lore of D&D, &D, in their their diseases and medicines and whatnot, um, there's no reason to believe that what he has is contagious. But what he has is deadly. I hand a flask of, of water to Thrissel. I will uh, try to see if this individual can be. What's it doing? Is it just like sleeping? Is it just laying there? Uh, it looks like he's passed out as far as you're concerned. Uh, it's well, hard to tell. He can't even seem to try to open his eyes. Oh, he passed out. Maybe he went to cardiac arrest. Or... Let's check for let's check for a pulse here. He might be dead. Um. He sends a very faint and incredibly slow beating. 
on cranberry slow beating. Well, this guy's probably septic shock, so let me get some fluids. Uh, but I don't have those, so Is instead that, I will. Uh, get some what? what? <laughs> you need some what? <laughs> some fluids. So instead, I'm just gonna, gonna, just gonna, just gonna. Isn't that what the water's for? Well, yeah, but you know, you gotta go through the digestive system, and you know, you don't absorb 100% of the fluids, right? And this guy is having a rash, so he's probably an infected process, probably nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, so there's, so there's even more fluids, I assume. Yeah. We need direct injection. Hmm. Nah, I was gonna cast less the restoration on him. <laughs> oh, shit. There you go. That's crazy. I hope you only have one disease. <laughs> All right, and so you you use this lesser restoration. You see that the the spotty rashes on his skin seems to subside for now, but the physical state that his body is in, it's still. Skin and bones, he's still barely breathing. But you see his his eyes are less less uh they're they're squinting less, indicating he's he's a, in a lot less pain than he was before. Right. I um I open I like get his mouth open. Um and then I'll take out a good berry and then I will like oh, yeah. I'll squish the good berry so it's like so the, the liquids go into his mouth so it's like easier to digest uh -huh. that's a good idea and, like mush it he needs the nourishment he needs all the calories I cast, okay. I cast greater restoration when he's done with that damn greater restoration <laughs> well, I have it three of them and I reduce his exhaustion level by one. Okay. <laughs> That's an assumption that you're making, but sure, it's let's go with that. Shot. We, we, are, we are saving this this random NPC. So <laughs> getting getting saved. Saved. Yeah, like, uh, I'll, I'll get uh, three of you guys inspiration right now. Yo. Damn, I already have inspiration. Riff. <laughs> oh, what the... Anyways. <clears throat> yeah, so... Uh, you see that um, there is some relief in this guy's expression. You can see his his face is actually able to make an expression of of what looks like relief. He's not exactly smiling, but you see that he's able to breathe just fine just now. As you can see, his lungs and his chest are actually starting to breathe and expand. His chest is actually getting a little bit bigger when he inhales. And you can see him exhaling just fine. I mean, his body's still skin and bones. It doesn't give him any like extra strength in that sense. But you see that he's starting to process normal bodily functions. Okay. So he's, maybe he's cursed. Is he like stable now? He's mostly stable now, yes. I try to remove a curse if he's got one. I don't know if he has one. He just looks at you and says, Hey, bud, what the hell are you trying to do to me? I kick him in the shin and I say, Shut up, I'm trying to save your life. <laughs> I say, say uh, Thistle. I say, uh, Kerfuffle, it's, it's this man. I say, Oh, my mistake, sir. <laughs> he, he just looks at you and as he's like rubbing his shin and he says, like, What the hell was that? I say, I'm sorry, I'm drunk, and I stumble away. I say, here, a good berry for your troubles. Huh? I say, eat it, so it'll, it'll kill you. I mean, if you're giving me food, I'm not gonna say no. And he tries it, and he says, What the hell? He's, he's like, he looks shocked at the good berry. And he says, you, you got more of those? I say it's. I say it, it. It'll kill you for a day. Damn. 
Are you actually secretly rich? I said, no, no. Just, just blessed. Just blessed. But to look at me. Okay. I look like someone that's rich. You want to share some of that with the other boys over here? I say, I say, don't worry, don't worry. And I'm, I'm going back to this guy. I'm gonna say. And and I hand him, I hand him a full bag of good berries, which is, um, a hundred and forty eight good berries. What the and, fuck? And, I, and and I say, I say, I say. And he's out to your boys. It'll expire in a few hours. You know what? That's better than most food I ate this week. And I already told you what I ate. And uh, you see a bunch of them just starting to hoard around this guy, right? Um, there's a whole mob of them like surround the, the center of this area. And... Um, you see them all just kind of like going at it, right? On this bag, they're just like, without any order or any um, uh, any uh, elegancy, they just go through this bag like it's nothing. And you see them all just devouring these berries to until it's nothing, and then the bag goes empty, and then he he gives it to you as he tosses it from across the crowd, and he says. Nah, that was some good shit. Where the hell did you find that? Say, I make these myself. And I say, just, I say, uh, by the way, um, I say, uh, keep, uh, is it an uh, art? What's it called? Um, I, I know that uh, things are rough out here, but um, don't, uh, Fight or steal from us, and every time I come here, and I will provide you with with this food. All right, that's something we can get down with. Yeah, that, that, uh, that's it. Uh, what was it that uh, you needed? Ah, uh, yeah. So here's the thing. One of our boys. He kind of hunts animals for the game. He takes a few of us with us with him sometimes, and God bless his soul for helping out some of the poor folk out here, just like you. You're you're a great help, but um, some bastards ransacked his ass recently from from some ruins in the south. One of our boys just barely got back, uh, barely alive, and. They were just telling me about it. Uh, a lot of them got hit, and some of them even died. Now, if you can go find them and give them some, teach them a lesson, we'll always be grateful for you. And we'll even consider you a friend of our own. I know this is probably a bit much to ask, but in these parts, you got to ask whoever you can to get by. But you know what? Do this for us. And whatever we can do as a favor for you, it's as good as done. See. Sure. Uh, where where do you think they are? Well, they're in some ruins at the south of this whole place. Can't be too far, I mean, my boy who tries to find some animals to, to eat, I mean, he can't go too far, or he'd get lost, or uh, it'll take too long to find some shit. I'm sure if you just go around to the south randomly, eventually you run, and run into some ruins. There's only one pair of ruins in the south that he could really talk about that's nearby. It shouldn't be any more than 20 miles away, I'd say. What is Hilda for? <laughs> so, let's see. Let's see what we can do. Okay. 
Jaw of the Iron Man. I was not expecting this to be an actual NPC. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because it's a D and D enemy token. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you just assume? Did you just assume you were gonna fight these guys? hundred <laughs> percent. I was literally when I saw them, I was like, let's just skip this talk. Oh really? <laughs> Because like, oh, these, the, these guys are hanging right the, here, you, you get here, and then you're going to ambush from behind, that kind of... Yeah, I mean, they because could... they could still ambush us at the ruins, to be fair. It's true, they'll be like, damn, like, we're healthy enough to ambush you now that we're fed. Like, <laughs> yeah, we just healed their, we just healed their, uh, ace. <laughs> yeah, I, I just killed the person who is my new form of sustenance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, um, and I guess we'll continue wandering. Is there, I say, is there anything else of note here in the slums? Sorry, what did you say, Street? I, I say to this guy, I say, is there anything else here of note in the slums? Hmm. You know. You really ought to look out for these guys I've seen once in a while. They wear hoods and uh, I think in one of their hands they have this weird ass tattoo. Or was it was it the lightning bolts and the dagger? Yeah, yeah. I think I've seen some shit like that. Now, one, one of my boys went to uh, fuck around with one of them. And they found out for sure. I mean, we saw him the next day, strung up and dead. They're, they're very dangerous. <clears throat> I ran into them. You see them from time to time. Now, now around here. Don't know who the fuck they are, but it, you don't fuck around with them. That's for sure. I say, um, say, uh, what is it? What's your name, by the way? Oh, me? I'm John. And, uh, Hi, my brother, John. my brother over here behind me is, uh, he's Jack. Hi, Jack. Three scars. The fuck are you on them? <laughs> you, guys, you look up, it's all just fucking smoke. It's it's an expression for hoping for better days ahead. You sound like one of those people up there. <laughs> do I look like people up there? No, you don't. Which is why it's a little weird. You know, you're, you're talking like them, but you're clearly not one of them. I, sh I shout from over here. He's kind of a nerd. What the fuck is a nerd? You know, yeah. someone who likes books. You know, honestly, none of us can read a goddamn thing. I say, my man. But if you can read a book, that's good for you. But that doesn't mean shit in a fight. Hmm. Be surprised. What, what, uh, what'd you say, Ashton? I say, you'd be surprised. He says, ah, unless you got some magic bullshit. <laughs> I'm seeing otherwise. Your magic bullshit. I say so, magic soling. I say you can also you can also read about combat tactics in books. <laughs> well, maybe, but I don't know. What's gotten me so far is uh, some genuine talent. You see, him kind of playing around with his karam bit, <laughs> like all all dexterous, like. I say, I'm sure it's gotten you far. Say, 
Is there anything else? Anything else here? Hmm. Nah. That's all. Is there anything you want me to look out for? Just keep, just keep an eye on, and uh, just keep, keep away from those hooded figures you mentioned earlier. Um, if you see them doing anything strange, let me know. Yeah, sure. I'll let you know. Well then. Um, so is there anything else on this map? No, for the most part, it's just literally mostly this game. Okay. Where are we going now? Then let us, then let us, uh, <laughs> yeah, to the or what time would it be by the time we got to the end? Uh, so it took 40 minutes to get to, so by the time you get to the end, I'd say roughly 8 p.m. Okay, nice. Then how long would it take to get from the end to, uh, the wizard's tower? The wizard's hut? Yeah, it's probably, it's probably going to be a day. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay, to the end then. All right, to the end. Can you guys uh, group up so I can just delete you all at once? Today, I taught Owen that I can use enemy NPC tokens as normal civilians. <laughs> I think well, we, we just we did inverse the good thing the the ones with uh special tokens they're all enemies. <laughs> good thing we didn't just start combat. It's like, oh well there goes the entire quest line I, I worked like I worked on. <laughs> Alright. So the end. Let me we'll get that map ready. Was the um the mention of the the guy that was like sick? Was that like just like a throwaway line? Yep. <laughs> but it turned into like a <laughs> like old. I, I, I think it was. It felt like I'm it gonna was let good. you guys guess on that one. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it definitely is. <laughs> nice, nice. That's good uh, improvisation. It was, yeah. Ooh. Asta, three on. This girl like she knows about a lightning bolt symbol. Just saying. The hell goes it? It's uh, it's definitely been a long day for us. Uh, how was your day? Also long. Hey, so I guess we have a lot to discuss. Yeah, let's let's head inside. We'll catch up. Sure. When you see um, Asta in particular uh, sets down some money from this uh, innkeeper, and uh, she puts down some drinks in return, and he starts handing it to you guys without like without asking for anything back in particular. He's just handing it out. And then uh, Rion over here is saying, over here, this is going to be our table. Up at the, next to the wall. Oh, nice. Exactly. Kind of place to be. Oh. Oh, that's it, sure. <clears throat> How convenient there are eight seats. 
<laughs> Emma Watson over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This guy's even, this guy's just happy to be here. Yeah. Tom. Tom Bombadil. All right, so um, first things first, Strider. Uh, what do you want to know first? Tell me about the uh, these rebels. Right. So um, I actually managed to convince them to to go see you. You're gonna have to go see their leader if they want to start working with you first. But uh, before they fully trust you as well, they got a few tasks in mind. Sure. So what are uh, visits? Thing is, we gotta keep it on the down low, and we're gonna need to disguise ourselves just so, just so. Uh, they're not exposed. If you're not, if you're getting what I'm saying. See, so, uh, is what I'm wearing bad? We want to look like. Well, I guess you might fit in, but maybe your friends won't. But we, we gotta, we gotta look like normal people from the slums, essentially. I say we need a cover. An elf, a dwarf, some crazy man who shapeshifts, and a human all wandering around together. Sure to stick out no matter what clothes we wear. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I don't really have a disguise kit myself, so I can't really help for you, but you have something that can help? I say I can take care of the disguises. That's not an issue. All right, and that sounds good to me. So yeah, I'll I'll bring you over to to go see them, but uh, they're they're definitely gonna expect some favors before they start working with you. It's just, I guess, part of it is they want to see how strong you are. The other part is if you're actually a spy or not to them. Now, obviously, I mean, I I know what you're really like, Strider. I I. I vouch for you in every way I could, but they gotta see see you for themselves. I understand. I feel the same way if I were them. And so when when should we meet? Tonight. Tonight. Before you Tonight. Sleep. Okay. Very well. Very well. Now I will say too, and keep this on the down low, and uh, he he. He gets closer to your ears, getting ready to whisper. And he says, some of them might be looking at us right now, in fact. Not... I don't know who, but they definitely got eyes. And uh, one last thing. Some of the people around this place uh, you might want to watch how you talk around them. Uh, have you heard what happened here in the last 10 years? I got some idea. Let's fill me in what you know. Rumor has it that uh, a few of the people over here are rejected nobles. And what I'm trying to get at is they're potentially people that the rebels might want to work with. So we don't want to upset anyone just randomly. I see. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it, Grafalfa? I know. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with Grafalfa? He's 
He's our, our charismatic bard. All right. Um, I'm just going to leave your your party to yourself. You know how to handle each other. Um, yeah, so whenever you guys are ready, I'm ready to go. So is Asta. It's, it's been forever since we've last met. Which one of you is which? I'm... I'm Asta. And then uh, the fisherman raises his uh, fishing rod. And then he, the other guy says, I'm Rion. And he right, just right. Uh, puts on his goggles, I guess. <laughs> now, my suggestion is um, we go in pairs of twos, going together as a group is a bit it's a bit much we have a pretty big group here so uh one person can go with asta one person can go with me and the rest um i'm just gonna generally tell you how to how to go all right i'm with you Okay, so the who are the pairs going to be? So first one is Rion and Ashton. Yeah. Let's just line them up like over here outside. He's the ones. So it's going to be Rion and Ashton. Who's going to go with Asta? I nominate David. I don't know what David was in there. I think that's a good choice. Yeah. I think uh, Hargrave with the uh, fishing. The illusion of choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you guys can change it. I'm just giving it a default. The council has spoken <laughs> and has decided your fate. <laughs> right, I'll go with Compton. Okay, go. Sounds good. All right, all right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Okay. Wait, All right. Okay. So, with the with the go with. <laughs> so uh, you guys, so you guys first uh, get briefed by Rion and Asta on how to get there. So let's just say your characters generally know how to get to where it is, but um, each one of you have uh, a good twenty to thirty minutes of talking one on one as you guys are going to the location of the rebels. But. Um, it's up to you if you actually decide to talk or if you're just going to skip. But uh, Ashton, do you say anything in particular to Rion? Um, about what? <laughs> I don't know if you just want to talk to him. But he might actually just straight up talk to you too. But okay. Did you want to engage the conversation first, perhaps? Um, I say, how's, so how's, how's, uh, how's it been back in Laguna? If I had to be honest with you, it's, it's worse than when I first started trying to work here. Yeah, I've noticed things are, things are not at all what it was 10 years ago. I thought I had it bad when, when I was working here, but uh, after even talking to a few people, it sounds like the king and everyone else is on thin ice. Yeah. He, the king, he was, he was poisoned. Yeah, the, the former one. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. King Aegon. Uh, Aegon. Yeah, that, that sounds right. 
I'm I don't I'm not too familiar with the, the royal family. I people talk about them a lot, but I don't actually remember their names. Uh, embarrassingly, say Megan was a he was a great king. Things things were much better under his rule. Clearly, I. I'm a little biased because I've had a terrible experience when when I was first working here, and I think he was the ruler at the time, but I also understand he's not in control of completely everything. Hmm. That's you control a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, who am I? Like, my opinion is not going to change what the, the royal court thinks. Perhaps. Anyways, uh, when, when we finally get there, uh, of course, they're going to expect that you don't tell them, or sorry, you don't tell anyone about where they are, who they are, and what they do. So, uh, Try to keep that on the down low. Yeah, of course. All right. We'll wait here for the rest of your friends, and he he kind of just like has has you and him kind of posting by behind some bushes next to a tree, and uh, he's just waiting for the time to go by. <clears throat> All right. So next group is Hargrave and Asta. So. Aspa is just kind of leading you, Hargrave, but he kind of like looks at you awkwardly from time to time. And he, he looks like he's trying to find something to talk about. But he, he looks at you and studies you uh, from, from your, from your uh, mask and then down. And he says, so uh, how do you and Strider know each other? David? Is he AFK? Or is he AFK? <laughs> He's stepping away for a second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoopsies. Okay. Let's skip to uh, Kerfuffle and Bristol. Uh, I asked I ask Bristol, I say, uh, so what deity do you worship? I, uh, I do a little time pause here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I had one. The religion that gives him his subclass. Okay. I pretend like you gave me an answer, and I say, uh... <laughs> "Yeah, I still had. I don't have have one." <laughs> I, I'm filled with a placeholder for some reason, and I say, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> I say, uh, I'm jealous of you and uh, Strider's affection for your deities. <laughs> if I could have it my way, none of the gods would exist. But alas. What specifics did you have for, for the gods? Honestly, I just wish they'd leave me alone. Hey, I... how many are bothering you? Well, I know of Tyr. There could be others. At least I assume it's Tyr. That's the deity my father worships. Have you have have you ever had dreams or visions like voices? Yeah, something similar to what what Ashen had. I scratch my head. I try to think hard, and I say, I don't remember.
as I uh as as I think about in, in character which which will hopefully have a better memory than I do RL. Did 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 you ever like did we kinda of learn about your character? Uh somewhat, yeah. So what well, okay, I s uh, I I must have a uh, you might not have been there. I don't remember. It's been a long look. Okay. Hmm. You could always ask now, even if uh, technically it's known. Oh. Yeah, ask away. I say, you look like you want to ask me something. There's something on your mind, Bristol. Something on my mind. It's been a while. But you remind me where you came from. I say, sure, I'm from the land of Valanus. I scratch my head. head, is that, I've never heard of that, is it on this, in this plane? I say, I think so. What's, what's over there? Tell me about it. I say, uh. Well, I don't know much outside of my hometown. And uh, then I, I spent most of my time locked in my room. Oh, what do you do over there then? In, inside your room? Uh, I think back. And I remember the lie I told the party about being trapped in there. And I wonder if I should tell Crystal the truth. And I say, eh, why not? I say, well, it wasn't all bad. There was my caretaker. She was nice. Caretaker? I say, she used to read and play games with me and bring me food. I like the stuff they serve here. Good food. Ah, so... Also, also companion of, of such, then? I say, yeah. She oh. was. She was, and I look sad. I uh probably probably noticed the change in in tone and um I I would assume so. And I uh and I say I'm all ears if there's something you want to speak if you want to talk about. I think about it's it. It's okay if it is all right if you do not wish to speak of 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 it. Everybody I has their own secrets. I say I guess I can trust you. Just don't tell anyone else. I say, uh, remember how I told you I killed someone and that's how I was sentenced away. That wasn't exactly true. I did kill someone, but it was an accident. It was my caretaker. And that's what wrecked me with guilt. Accidents? What, what, what of the incident? What happened? I say, uh, my sorcerer powers. They, uh, manifested one day. And I accidentally immolated her. That does seem that does sound very much of a of a freak accident after all. I say my father wasn't it, even mad about it though. That's the weird part. <laughs> Has he always been 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 this emotional less person? I say, uh, yeah, pretty much. The only time he got angry was when I snuck into his study. Oh, there must be great secrets over there. Yeah, I assume so. That's why he actually tried to execute me. He must have thought I saw something I wasn't supposed to. What What did he do for a living? What was his occupation? He was an adventurer, much, much like Hart. Yeah, he's uh pretty old, much older than a human should be. Fair enough. He must have 
have stumbled upon many tales and many secrets of, as from from all that from all that traveling. And so yeah, he's loved by his people. I say, anyways, enough of that. I think we're almost to the to the rendezvous location. At this point, um, you do see Ashton and uh, Rion. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on to Hargrave and Asta. Uh, Hargrave, you're traveling with Asta to go to the rebel camp. Uh, it's just you and him because you guys don't want to drive too much attention to yourselves. Um, <clears throat> So, assuming you're in your disguises and stuff, he's talking to you and he says, and in, he, he looks really awkward, right? Like, he's darting his eyes back at you and back on the road, and it looks like he's been trying to make up a, a way to start the conversation for, like, a good ten minutes before he finally just goes with, so, uh, you, you know Strider, huh? The fisherman dude, right? How was that? Is the fisherman dude talking? Yeah, it's the fisherman dude. <clears throat> I said, like, yeah, we've been traveling together for a while. Um, if I had to be honest, it doesn't look like any of you guys would know each other normally. Who? How did you even meet? came across this this group in a cave I was hunting someone down and then well I suppose I might not have made it out without them so I just decided to help them and just follow them and eventually uh, we could I could help them and they could help me You, you really trust them that much that they pay you back in return for your help? Well, they haven't done anything wrong, or not at least not against me, except for that one time one of them almost turned evil, but we figured that out, so it was fine. What are you talking about? Well, one of them tried to kill everyone else. But that was that in the was... past. Oh, I see. And you see at this point, he's still awkward, right? And uh, he just stays quiet for the rest of the trip unless, uh, unless you say something. Did you say hi? No. no. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah. So he stays quiet, and uh, eventually you see the rest of the group minus Relin and Potsentek, who are now starting their walk. Okay. Um, yeah, we head over. Yeah. And then... Talk about killing green skins. Sure. I say. So, what did you think of those dad jokes that librarian told me about? Um, I didn't quite understand, but if you found them funny, then I found them funny too. I say, oh, of course they were funny. At the expense of the green skins, it's all funny. Oh, so we laugh at those, right? Ah, ha, yes. Ha, ha, ha. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh. Ah, ha, 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 ha. You could just... Are we do, we're doing the, the, the cloud laugh or whatever. The, the Titus laugh. Yeah. 
uh-huh. I, I just like my this the laugh doesn't really reach my eyes. I'm just I still see I'm like slightly confused, but it's just with earnest effort. Ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and I say, ah, oh, that's the spirit, and I give you like a good uh, pat on the back. Nice. I use my mage hand to pat myself on the back too. <laughs> okay. I'm too lazy to reach over. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, so, what do you think of the situation in Laguna? Hmm, well, it's not simple, but it's never so simple, is it? I feel like ever since I left my village, this world seems much bigger than I ever imagined. And when you have so many people in the same place, well, of course you'll find people who think differently. The only solution is to get everyone to think the same, right? I say, hmm. I'd be inclined to agree with you, but isn't that what makes everyone special? Like, say, you and I. Like, your, your homeland is cold and bleak, but that's what makes you and your people what you are, isn't it? My hatred of greenskins, I'm sure not everyone thinks the same as I do. And that's all right. I don't expect everyone to hate them as much as I do. But the conflict is still there. If we were to all think the same, hmm, I think someone would have brainwashed all of us. Be it unsettling. Yes, I understand what you're saying. Of course, individuality is important, but, well, when it comes to dealing with the masses, you cannot grant them too many freedoms, right? That's how Lord Payne sees control, through fear and terror. And here, even, it seems as if the current rulers of this city are A poor fit to rule, and yet they rule nonetheless. Well put. And you'll see that almost everywhere we go. But do you think it is our duty to change that, as friends of Ashton? The people must decide for themselves, right? I mean... At the very least, if you wish to control a population, the easiest way to do so is to unite them against a common enemy. If you can convince even the lowest, poorest man that there is one lower than them, such as a greenskin, then they will ignore the ones truly treating them terribly and turn their own hatred towards others. That is how you control the masses. And you can see, you can see a, a look of fear come over Potem Pack's face as he, he thinks to himself, like, is this the true reason why we hate the Greenskins? And then, and then that feeling washes over quickly and he forgets about it. Yeah, I say. Ah, but that's just the silly ramblings of a child. I'm sure the Greenskins deserve everything bad, and much worse. That's the same conclusion I came to just now. See, I'm glad we see eye to eye on these matters, Raylan. I nod enthusiastically, of course. All right. So by the end of your conversation, you, you do manage to see the rest of your group. As at this point, you're all huddled around the entrance of the rebel camp. You're all wearing disguises and whatnot still, 
Um, I'm assuming like Kerfuffle did some magic stuff. And then uh, you guys make it all the way to the rebel ship. At this point in time, let me see if I set up like a like a night version of this map. Okay, at this point in time, it is getting pretty late at night. Um, I'd say uh, it's probably getting towards 10 p.m. But you guys do manage to make it to the rebel camp. Uh, did you guys load it? Yeah, yeah. Alright, and then Asta says... Or sorry, Rion says... Alright, here we are. This is done. Yeah, okay. Is there anything we need to do? Um, I'll go talk to them. And you can just follow me. So you see him kind of conversing with this this uh, knight, and eventually uh, they they give the nod and they they start to let your group in. And you see that the knight starts to lead in Asta and Rion, and you guys are expected to follow basically. Okay. It's just a quiet and somewhat, uh, somewhat tense air as people kind of judge you from all angles and whatnot. So you see all kinds of camps set up, people kind of uh, trying to kindle to some fires and whatnot. But you, you also see um, barely uh, from your uh, eyes, Strider, in your eyes specifically, just because of your, your passive perception, there are some archers mounted onto the, onto the cliffs and whatnot, trying to keep a, a close eye around the perimeter. But they don't, they don't track their arrows towards you, they just keep an eye on you. Okay. Um, Rion turns around to you, uh, Ashton, and he says, Right, Strider, uh, they said for your group to wait here for a bit. Uh, they want to start with talking to you. They'll see you at the end of the, the cave. And he points to the southern part of the cave. Uh... You just go in and you go down. Like this? Yeah. Yeah, and then take a ride from here. I look at my surroundings as I... <gasps> Ashton, as you step into this cave, you're greeted by what looks like your parents, alive in the flesh. I, and I, your your father greets you with three and through your disguise even he he recognizes you, and he says, "It's so good to finally see you, son." And. I'm going to end the session here. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe it. Holy shit.